Well, agenda setting has begun in earnest for the Ashwaju presidency. Joining me now is the CEO, Brute Consulting, Lukunle Nyoda, uh, on the News at 7. Thank you for joining us on TVC News at 7. Uh, but before we set agenda for the incoming administration, Dr. Nyoda, uh, let's get your comments on what is now the call for interim national government after a winner has emerged at the presidential election. Uh, good evening, and uh, thank you for, for having me. Um, I've been following, you know, stories regarding, you know, call for uh, interim national government and what have you. And the question I ask myself is that those, the proponent of interim national government, why are they calling for interim national government? Because they lost election or what? The case is already, you know, they've already sent their petition. They are going to court. So why asking for interim national government? And if you look in the history, if you look at countries that have had interim national government, like Chad, like Egypt, like Algeria, Venezuela, Haiti, and, and what have you, what are, even in Sudan, what are Libya, Liberia, what has become of those countries? So those who are calling for uh, interim national government, are they wishing that Nigeria should get back to that? I mean, to, I mean Nigeria should not be like any of those countries currently? Is that what they are asking for? Are they calling for insurrections? You know, so for me, I think the interim national government is a call to anarchy, it's a no-no. And the reason why I say uh, it's a no-no is when you look at countries that have had interim national government, they had interim national government because there was war, or maybe there is a coup, and there is uh, 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 an insurrection by the people demanding for a new thing. So. You are asking APC government, who is going to hand over to another APC government to declare that, oh, the government of Buhari has failed, so as a result of that, we are going to set up in, uh, an interim national government. For me, it doesn't even sound logical. So I think that those who are calling for interim national government need to have a rethink. And the reason why they need to have a rethink is that it is not going to be in the interest of everybody. Currently, all of us are talking we can say whatever we like, you can abuse the president, you can say this, you can say that, because there is freedom that all of us are enjoying. Uh, when you had in, uh, interim national government during um, uh, Babangida you know, regime, you know, we had Soneka and then from there, what did we get? We got a bacha. I get your point, Dr. Yoda. You are saying oh. that um, the inauguration date of May 29th is sacrosanct and is needed for, you know, Continuity uh, absolutely, in, in, and for those Nigerian who are aggrieved, I think what they need to do is to go to the court. That is what has to be done. There is no need for anybody to set the country on fire. Anybody I hear you. trying to do that, just trying to protect their national, I mean, their personal interest. As a strategist and corporate educator, what should be, uh, uh, what should the incoming administration? prioritize, for instance, in the first 100 days. Remember that in 2015, we had to wait for six months before um, the list of the ministers of this administration uh, was announced. I, I think, for me, what the first thing that the incoming administration should do is to come up with uh, a very solid cabinet. You know, uh, the president-elect said he's going to you know, come up with uh, government of national competence. That is very good. But beyond national competence, we also need a cabinet that is made up of people of good character, people who have commitment to the Nigeria agenda. That should be the first, the first point of call. Once that is done, I think the, 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 the cabinet, the president, need to focus aggressively on the economy. Because for me, I believe that if we are able to reject Nigeria economy, where people can have food on the table, where they can send their children to school, where they can take care of their health, then the issue of security will be solved. Then the issue of anybody by giving anybody one, I mean, 1,000 to go and vote will become a thing of the past. So for the incoming government to demonstrate that they are very, very serious, they need to come up with economy that is people-centric. It's not just economy that is just, you know, just there, that's just theory, just an abstract thing. It has to be something that an average Nigeria can even interpret. Mm. They need to come up with a roadmap a clear roadmap that everyone will understand and everybody can measure where the government is going. 
Once you have that, then there's going to be a national commitment. All the, all the, all the, um, all the stories that you have now currently, you know, going on and all of that will be a thing of the past. If Nigeria can take care of themselves, I believe that Nigerians will be happy. So the first, for me, the first thing that the government should do, you need to come up with a, uh, a, um, a cabinet that is made up of people of competence and character and commitment. Then followed by that, we need to focus strongly on the economy. If we can fix the economy, every other thing is going to fall in place. And lastly, you also need to do a mass reorientation of our people in terms of doing an aggressive value reengineering, and that has to come from our people, from the leaders. Leaders need to lead by example. If they lead by example, you have a very strong Ministry of Information. The Ministry of Information need to do a lot of work to, for people to understand that, yes, hope is back, for people to understand the role that they need to play in the Nigeria agenda. Absolutely. It's only through that. So that, you're talking about, you know, you're talking uh, about economy, the, well. the need to rebrand the nation. In addition to that would be the issue of security as well, which has become, you know, a huge challenge for uh, Nigeria. But government, they say, is a continuum. Do you expect heads to roll? Do you expect some rapid change in, you, you know, the names of government stakeholders? Is that the way forward, uh, uh, moving forward from May 29? Very interesting question you ask, actually. Should the hair roll and why? Uh, for me, I think for this government to show, to demonstrate any form of seriousness, there has to be a clean sweep in various sectors, in various ministries, agencies, because these are people that have been there for maybe eight years. People have lost confidence in the current uh, uh, administration. They have lost confidence in in some of the people that are the hems of our fear in this country. So for me, I think if you are talking about national competence, then we have to, the, the, the incoming government has to do something that will make people to believe that the government is serious, okay? Uh, national competence shouldn't just be hard. It has to be something that can be seen, that people can feel. And for people to feel it, to perceive that, yes, uh, we have government, I mean, people who are, there to represent our interest. For me, I just think that uh, things have to be done differently. Um, the incoming, you know, administration has to, you know, bring people that Nigerians will have faith in. Absolutely. So Handover day is go? just about Absolutely. 56 days away and all eyes on the president-elect and the decisions he will make in this regard. CEO Brute Consulting, Olukunle Ariyo Inyoda, thank you for talking to us. Th thank you for having me.